Shalom. Today I would like to talk about Hezekiah, the king of Judah. He's one of the best kings of Judah ever. He, he followed the Lord with his whole heart and he was just like his father David, it's, it is said. And we read about his story uh, in three books in, in Kings in Chronicles and in Isaiah. In 2 Kings 18, the first is 1 till 8. In the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, son of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that David his father, his forefather David, had done. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that David his father had done. He removed the high places, and he broke the pillars, and he cut down the Asherah, and he broke in pieces the bronze serpent, the bronze serpent that Moses had made, for until those days the people of Israel had burned incense to it. It was called Nehushtan. Yes, his forefathers Asa and Joseph, Jehoshaphat, they were good kings as well, and they had reforms. But they left the, the they left the high places. But he even removed the high places, and they left the bronze serpent. Uh, people had started uh, worshiping the bronze serpent. Trust in the Lord, the, the God of Israel, so that there was none like him. Um, so there was none like him among all the kings of Judah after him, nor among those who were before him. For he held for because you know reason for. For he held fast to the Lord, he did not depart from following him, but kept the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him, wherever he went forth he prospered. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and would not serve him. He smote the Philistines as far as Gaza and its territory from watchtower to fortified city. Well, he becomes king at the age of 25, and the first thing he does in his first year is to cleanse the temple, because the temple had become, had fallen into disarray. In 2 Chronicles 29, the first 17 verses. Hezekiah began to reign when he was 25 years old, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that his father David had done. In the first year of his reign, in the first month, so in the month of Nisan, the, the feast of the, of, uh, the, 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 the month of the feast of unleavened bread, he opened the doors of the house of the Lord and repaired them. He brought in the priests and the Levites and assembled them in the square on the east. And he said to them, Hear me, Levites, now sanctify yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord, the God of your fathers, and carry out the filth from the holy place. For our fathers have been unfaithful and have done what was evil in the sight of the Lord our God. They have forsaken him and have turned away their faces from the habitation of the Lord and turned their backs. They also shut the doors of the vestibule and put out the lambs and have not burned incense or offering or offered burnt offerings in the holy place to the God of Israel. Therefore the wrath of the Lord came on Judah and Jerusalem, and he has made them an object of horror, of astonishment, and of hissing, as you see with your own eyes. And then in verse 10, Now it is in my heart to make a covenant with the Lord, the God of Israel, that his fierce anger may turn away from us. And then verse 12, then the Levites arose. Verse 15, they sanctified themselves and went in as the king had commanded, by the words of the Lord to cleanse the house of the Lord. The priests went into the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it, and they brought out all the uncleanness they, that they found in the temple of the Lord, into the court of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took it and carried it out to the brook Kidron. They began to sanctify on the first day of the first month, on a new moon. God is actually doing this through Hezekiah. And when God does something, or when, he, when, it is his, when he's behind it, 
it often starts, he often starts things and does new things on the new moon. The tabernacle was erected on the 1st of Nisan and now they started cleansing the temple on the 1st of Nisan. They began sanctify, to sanctify on the first day of the first month and on the eighth day of the month they came to the vestibule of the Lord. So the temple complex was done on eight days and they came to the house itself. Then for eight days they sanctified the house of the Lord, and on the sixteenth day of the first month they finished. So yes, sixteen is the number of cleansing, and uh, they, they did this in two times eight days. And then after that they, they decide to keep the Passover. But of course they were too late for the Passover, and on top of that not all the priests had, had sanctified, had cleansed themselves. So he, they decide to keep the Passover in the second month. And he invites the ten tribes from the north. They're still there. They're still there. Uh, not all of them. You know, the, the Transjordan tribes, they have been removed by the Syrians. But most of, uh, most of uh, Manasseh and, and, and Ephraim, they're still there. And he decides to invite them, which, has hap which hasn't happened before, really, since the split of the empire into the split of the kingdom in two separate kingdoms, Israel and Judah, they haven't celebrated the feasts of the Lord together. And we find this in 2 Chronicles 30, verse, the verses 1 till 13. Hezekiah sent to all Israel and Judah, so to the ten tribes and to the two tribes, and wrote letters also to Ephraim and Manasseh, that they should come to the house of the Lord at Jerusalem to keep the Passover to the Lord, the God of Israel. For the king and his princes and all the assembly in Jerusalem had taken counsel to keep the Passover in the second month, because that's possible. Numbers nine is stated in Numbers nine. If you have missed, if you have good reasons for good reasons, you have missed uh, the Passover in the first month, you can still keep it in the second month, and they decided, they decided to do that. For they could not keep it in its time because the priests had not sanctified themselves in sufficient number nor had the people assembled in Jerusalem. And the plan seemed right to the king and to all the assembly. So they decreed to make a proclamation throughout all Israel, from Beersheba to Dan, that the people should come and keep the Passover to the Lord and the God of Israel at Jerusalem, for they had not kept it in great numbers as prescribed. Yes, and they hadn't kept it, they hadn't kept it in the north, that's for sure. So couriers went throughout all Israel, and Judah with letters from the king and its princes, as the king had commanded, saying, O people of Israel, return to the Lord, the God of Abram, Isaac, and Israel, that he may turn again to the remnant of you who have escaped from the hand of the kings of Assyria. So, yeah, parts of the ten tribes had gone into captivity already. And he's actually saying, well, if you turn, if you return to the Lord God, then God will be merciful and he will bring back your brothers. He will bring back uh, the, the captives if you, if, you, if, you, if you return to the Lord. But you will see that they, they won't. They, they will ridicule them and laugh at them. Do not be like your fathers and your brethren who were faithful to the Lord of God of their fathers so that he made them a desolation as you see. Do not be stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves to the Lord and come to his sanctuary, which he has sanctified forever, and serve the Lord your God, that his fierce anger may turn away from you. For if you return to the Lord, your brethren and your children will find compassion with their captors, and return to this land. For the Lord your God is gracious and merciful. So God will bring back the captives if you return to God. And, it, and will not turn away his face from you if you return to him. So the couriers went from city to city through the country of Ephraim and Manasseh and as far as Zebulun. But they laughed them to scorn. And I think that's the thing which is, it happens today as well. If you start preaching God, Jesus and the Bible, then many people laugh you to scorn in this hedonistic uh, godless society but they laughed them to scorn and mocked them only a few men a few of Asher and Manasseh and of Zebulun humbled the set themselves and came to Jerusalem the hand of God was also upon Judah 
to give them one heart to do what the king and the princes commanded by the word of the Lord. So the tribe of Judah is, you know, Judah, Benjamin and Judah, they are behind the king. And many people came together in Jerusalem to keep the feast of unleavened bread in the second month, a very great assembly. Well, so this is a great feast and they're having a great time and everything happened so quickly. You know, it's the first year of his reign and they started cleansing the temple in the first month. And then in the second month, they're keeping this feast, even with some people from the north that have come to, to celebrate this feast. And they're so happy that they actually decide to add another seven days and to eat unleavened bread for a fortnight, for 14 days. We find this in 2 Chronicles 30, verses 21 to 27. And the people of Israel that were present at Jerusalem kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days with great gladness. It's mentioned four times, the, the joy, the rejoicing, the happiness, the gladness. It's mentioned four times, they were so glad, with great gladness. And the Levites and the priests praised the Lord day by day, singing with all their might to the Lord. Then the whole assembly agree, agreed to keep together to keep the feast for another seven days. So they kept it for another seven days with gladness. Second time, the whole assembly of Judah and the priests and the Levites and the whole assembly that came out of Israel and the sojourners who came out of the land of Israel and the sojourners who dwelt in Judah rejoiced, rejoiced third time. So there was great joy four times. It mentioned four times. There was great joy in Jerusalem for since the time of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, there had not been nothing like this in Jerusalem. Then the priests and the Levites arose and blessed the people and their voice was heard and their prayer came to his holy habitation in heaven. Yes, the Lord heard them and they, he, he saw that his people were happy and they were happy keeping his feast. And if if, if his people are, are keeping his feast in happiness, then God is happy too. That makes God joyful as well. And after the, after the, after the feast, they, start, they went into the land and they started cleansing the land. The bits that were still left that had to be cleansed. It's in 2 Chronicles 31 verse 1. Now when all this was finished, all this celebrating of this feast of uh, unleavened bread, all Israel who were present went out to the cities of Judah and broke in pieces the pillars and hewed down the Asherim and broke down the high places and the altars throughout all Judah and Benjamin and the altars in Ephraim and Manasseh until they had destroyed them all. Then all the people of Israel returned to their cities, every man to his possession. And it wasn't just that, that he got rid of idolatry and of the idols, and of the Baals, and of the high places, but he restores things as well, Hezekiah. He restores visions of the priests in the 24 divisions of the Levites, and he, he, he restores the times and the sacrifices and, and the tithes. And we can read about it in 2 Chronicles 31, the verses 2 till 7. And Hezekiah appointed the divisions of the priests and of the Levites, just like his father David had done. Division by division, each according to his service, the priests and the Levites for burnt offerings and peace offerings, to minister in the gates of the camp of the Lord and to give thanks and praise. The contribution of the king from his own possessions was burnt was for the burnt offerings, the burnt offerings of daily, of morning and evening, and the burnt offerings weekly for the Sabbaths, and monthly for the new moons and annually for the appointed feasts of the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. And all that's described in Numbers 28 and Numbers 29. All the sacrifices are mentioned for the day, for the week, for the month and for the year. And he restores them all. So he restores the times of the Lord, the appointed times of the Lord he restores. And verses 6 and 7. And the people of Israel and Judah who lived in the cities of Judah also brought in the tithe of cattle and sheep and the dedicated things which had been consecrated to the Lord their God. 
and laid them in heaps. In the third month they began to pile up the heaps and finish them in the seventh month. And uh, this is in his first year of his reign. But then, then uh, this Assyrian king, Shalmaneser, Shalmaneser, he comes in the fourth year and to, to, to start a siege of Samaria. And Samaria is besieged for three years. And this is from the fourth till the sixth year of Hezekiah. And they're, they're after, after the fall of Samaria, they go into exile. Those people who laughed the couriers to scorn, who laughed at Hezekiah, who laughed at keeping the Passover, five years later, they, are, they, they go into, well, if they're still alive, because a lot of people died because of starvation and the sword and of hunger and of, of the plague. But the people who were still alive, they went into exile. And um, that was five years after Hezekiah's great Passover in 2 Chronicles 18, the verses 9 till 12. In the fourth year of King Hezekiah, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. And at the end of three years he took it, in the sixth year of Hezekiah. Samaria was taken. The king of Assyria carried the Israelites away to Assyria and put them in Hala and on the Habor and the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes, because they did not obey the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant, even all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded. They neither listened nor obeyed. No. Uh, from the time of Jeroboam, there had been the golden calves of Dan and Bethel, and there had been the Baals, and they had drifted away from worshipping uh, the Lord completely. And God sent them, you know, at the time, at this, at the time of the last king, um, Hoshea, there, was, there were the prophets Micah, and the prophet Hoshea, and the prophet uh, Isaiah, and they prophesied, but they didn't listen to the prophets. And Hezekiah invited them to come to his Passover. And they laughed at the, the, at the messengers. They laughed at them in scorn. And they did not come. Even, even the invitation of the king uh, was, was, was not listened to. So that's why they went into exile. And they were taken to the area which is now Kurdistan in, uh, in Turkey and Iran and Iraq, that, that northern part of Iraq, Kurdistan, that's where, that's where they were taken to. Then some, this was the sixth year of, of, Hezekiah, of Hezekiah. He, decides, he decided uh, to break loose from the Assyrian Empire, so he was not scared because he, he, he could have seen, you know, all those cities are taken and, and the, ten tribe, uh, the ten tribes have, have, have gone into exile as well. But apparently he trusted uh, in God or in defenses or whatever. He, 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 he broke away. He, he decided to stop paying tribute to the king of Assyria, who was also having troubles in other parts of the empire. So in, the, in his 14th year of Hezekiah, the king of Assyria comes to fight him. And uh, that's in 2 Kings 18, verse 13 till 16. In the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, saying, I have done wrong. Withdraw from me. Whatever you impose on me, I will bear. So he says, OK, I will pay tribute again. And the king of Assyria required of Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver, and thirty talents of gold. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord, and in the treasures of the king's house. At that time Hezekiah stripped the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord, and from the outdoor post which Hezekiah king of Judah had overlaid, and gave it to the king of Assyria. But then uh, Sennacherib, he broke his word, and uh, he sent his generals anyway with an army to go to Jerusalem. 2 Kings 18 verse 17. And the king of Assyria sent the Tartan, the Repsuris and the Repsheke with a great army from Lachish to King Hezekiah at Jerusalem. 
and they went up and came to Jerusalem. And then they, they, they are, there's derision, there's mockery, they mock Hezekiah, they mock the people, they mock the Lord, they mock the God of Israel. And that's in 2 Kings 18, verse 32 till verse uh, 36. And they say, And do not listen to Hezekiah when he misleads you by saying, The Lord will deliver us. Has any of the gods of the nations ever delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamad and Arpad? Where are the gods of Shephrampayim, Hina and Eva? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the gods of the countries have delivered your countries out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But the people were silent and answered him not a word, for the king's command was, do not answer him. Yes, this is important. Sometimes we have to learn to be so silent uh, and uh, when people mock God. Uh, sometimes it's it's time to say something and often it's it's a time to be to be silent to be quiet they go to king hezekiah and they they bring over they they bring him all the words of those generals uh, what they have said and king hezekiah he starts mourning he starts uh, fasting and mourning and putting on sack, sackcloth two kings 19 the first uh, seven verses. When King Hezekiah heard it, he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim, who was over the household, and Shepna, the secretary, and the senior priests, covered with sackcloth to the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos. They said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of distress of rebuke and of disgrace children have come to the birth and there is no strength to bring them forth it's a day of distress it may be that the lord your god heard all the words of the rapture which his master the king of assyria has sent to mock the living god and will rebuke the words which the lord your god has heard therefore isaiah Lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. When the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah, Isaiah said to them, Say to your master, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard, with, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled me. Have reviled me. God recognizes that, in, that he is mocked. It was not so much... The mockery of Hezekiah is the mockery of the God of Hezekiah. They have reviled me, God says. Behold, I will put a spirit in him so that he shall hear a rumor and return to his own land. And I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. That's the message from, from, from Isaiah to Hezekiah. But those generals, they go back to the king, to King Sennacherib uh, in Lachish, and then Sennacherib, he sends a letter with more insults to, to, to Hezekiah. And what Hezekiah does then, he takes the letter and he goes out to the house of God and spreads out the letter before the Lord and says, look how you are mocked. Look at the false accusations. Look. And that's something that uh, Christians have done as well. And it's something that we can do if we are, if we are mocked or if we have, if there's injustice committed uh, to us and we have it in print, we can just go to our bedroom and spread it out before the Lord and pray and kneel to God and say, look what they're doing. Look what they're demanding. Look how injustice they're trying to treat. To treat me and that's a good thing to do what Hezekiah did he, he went to the house of the Lord and he spread out the letter 2 Kings 19 verses 9 till 12 Sennacherib sent messages again to Hezekiah saying thus shall you speak to Hezekiah king of Judah do not let your God on whom you rely deceive you by promising that Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria 
Behold, you have heard what the king of Assyria have done to all lands, destroying them utterly. And shall you be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them? The nations which my fathers destroyed, Gozan, Haran, Resed, and the people of Eden, who were in Tel Asar. And then uh, in 2 Kings 19, verse 14 till 19. Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, the God of Israel, who art enthroned above the cherubim, thou art the God, thou art alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. Thou hast made heaven and earth. Incline thy ear, O Lord, and hear. Open thy eyes, O Lord, and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to mock the living God. Which he has sent to mock the living God. Of a truth, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, for they were no gods, but the work of man's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they were destroyed. So now, O Lord our God, save us, I beseech thee, from his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou, O Lord, are God alone. He saved them by an angel. God sends an angel to Kings 19, verse 35. And that night the angel of the Lord went forth and slew 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. And when men arose early in the morning, behold, these were all dead bodies. Then Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went home. Yeah, he was alive and dwelt at Nineveh. He was alive to see his defeat. If he had died, he hadn't seen his defeat, but God left him alive to see the dead army. And as he was worshipping in the house of Nisroch, his god, Adramelech and Sherezer, his sons, slew him with the sword and escaped into the land of Aradat. And Esarhaddon, his son, reigned in his stead. And then we come to the story of Hezekiah's illness. It either happened during the siege or just after. And it's written down, uh, among others, in 2 Kings 20, the verses 1 to 6. In those days Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die, you shall not recover. That's quite something to hear. And his reaction is, Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in faithfulness and with a whole heart, and have done what is good in thy sight. That's quite something. He says, you know, faithfulness, I've been faithful, and with a wholeheartedly, and have done good what is in thy sight. And God does not deny it. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. So he turns to the, he turns and he, we, he weeps and he prays. And before Isaiah had gone out of the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him, turn back and say to Hezekiah, the prince of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord. And I will add, I will add 15 years, 15 years to your life. I will de deliver you and this city out of the hands of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. So apparently it was during the, during the siege. So God says, you're going to die. And then there is this, he weeps and he prays. And he beseeches God and he gets 15 years, but he get again, he gets a new ending. So this, this proves what, what it says in Psalm 139, verse 16. It says that God, God knows the days of our life from the beginning to the end. The moment before we are born, God knows the, the day of our birth and the day of our death. 
It says here in Psalm 139, verse 16, In thy book were written, every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. So the days before they were formed, all of them, from the birth day, the day of birth to the day of death, that before they were formed, they were already written in the book of God. And we see this in the story of Hezekiah. He gets, he gets another 15 years. And he gets a sign as well. The shadow went back 10 steps back in 2 Kings 20 verses 8 till 11. And Hezekiah said to Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I shall go up to the house of the Lord on the third day? And Isaiah said, This is the sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he has promised. Shall the shadow go forward ten steps or go back ten steps? And Hezekiah answered, It is an easy thing for the shadow to lengthen ten steps rather than rather let the shadow go back ten steps. And Isaiah the prophet cried to the Lord, and he brought the shadow back ten steps. By which, by which the sun had declined on the dial of Ahaz. A very great miracle. The, 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 the ten steps back. And he is he's very thankful. He's thankful to the Lord. And he, he, has, he even writes a psalm. Like his forefather David, he writes a psalm to a, a, a hymn of thanksgiving. And we read about that in Isaiah 38. The verses 10 to 20 is this psalm. I'm not going to read all of it for time's sake. Um, a writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, after he had been sick and recovered from his sickness. Verse 10. I said, in the noontide of my days I must depart. I am consigned to the gates of Sheol for the rest of my years. And then verse 17. Lo, it was for my welfare that I had great bitterness. But thou hast held back my life from the pits of destruction. For thou hast cast all my sins behind my back. So he realized he was a sinful man. He realized he had sins. The Lord will save me and we will sing to stringed instruments all the days of our life at the house of the Lord. So he realized that making music, singing hymns to the Lord was important. He was a man and he uh, had his mistakes, Hezekiah. He had pride and vanity, just like his forefather David, when David counted all of Israel, which when it was not necessary to do so. And uh, God punished David for that. That was done in an, in an attitude of pride. And here he has an attitude of pride when there are messengers coming from, from Babylon, was, which was a province which had fallen away from Assyria and which was very far away. And it says there in Isaiah 39 verses 1 till 8. At that time, Merodach Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent envoys with letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that he had been sick and had recovered. And in his pride, he shows him everything that he possesses, everything. And then the prophet Isaiah said in verse 4, What have they seen in your house? And Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing in my storehouses that I did not show them. That was not the right attitude. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. So he starts prophesying. Behold, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that the which your fathers have stored up till this days they shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And some of your own sons who are born to you shall be taken away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, The word of the Lord which is have spoken is good, for he thought there will be peace and security in my days. But uh, he was repentful anyway. He was he was he humbled himself because we can read about that in two Chronicles thirty two, verses twenty five uh, till twenty six. But Hezekiah did not make return according to the benefit done to him, for his heart was proud. 
Therefore wrath came upon him and Judah and Jerusalem. And then in verse 26, But Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord did not come upon him in the days of Hezekiah. And that, that's one of the reasons why he was such a good king and why he was like his father David. He, he was always truthful and loyal to the Lord. But whenever he sinned, he recognized the sin and he humbled himself. He went to, he, at the right moment, he would go to God with, with tears and weeping and sackcloth and fasting and mourning. And he would humble himself for the Lord. And that's, that's why the Lord was, that's why he's considered, you know, his actions and his reaction to his own sin. That's why he was one of the, one of the best kings ever. And the question, of course, is, do you serve, the God, serve God? Are you a servant of God? And the question is, when we go wrong, when you go wrong, do you go to God with weeping and with mourning and with fasting and with praying? Amen.